Neanderthals were violent and capable of hunting. They brought down deers, bears, buffaloes, and even mammoths. If the opponent was a powerful beast, they relied on their head rather than strength. No other humans had patience like theirs. Here, they provoke the beast. Hunts determine the fate of the group. Each death was a painful loss, especially since they have a small population. An intelligent, strong, and brave human species Unfortunately, these strengths may have led to their downfall. Neanderthals were stronger and more muscular than Homo sapiens. In order to maintain their body heat and strength, they needed up to 350 kilocalories more than us each day. If it were today, this slice of pie would be sufficient. Neanderthals had to hunt. Throughout their lives, they either feasted or starved, depending on the outcome of their life-threatening hunts. They worked together and shared fairly. This behavior was the key to their long survival. Looking at these lost humans, we can see our future. This elderly scholar has devoted his entire life to the study of linguistics. Philip Lieberman does not think that language as an exclusive property of Homo sapiens they lived for several hundred thousand, about 500,000 years in very cold climates in Europe that coped with the end of the glacial. So Neanderthals clearly had a language. Uh, and it, uh, some people have suggested they just hummed. That's, I think, nonsense. The fundamental function of language is communication. It fortifies relationships. As complex as their lives had been, they must have had a language. The only thing I would say is you can't have a word with an E or an O, and it's probably their speech was a little nasalized. That's, and we can tell that by looking at their airways. When you reconstruct, you look at the skull, and you look at the neck, uh, neck bone, bones of the neck, you can. Uh, see the limits of the anatomy would do it. So the speech would be okay. A system of song-like sounds to convey emotion. Gestures with meanings. Languages consolidate groups. People use languages to talk about politics, economy, society, and others. The more time they spend communicating, the more unified the group becomes. 
Professor Dunbar believes that these human relationships had an effect on the human brain. People use their big brains to talk about their friendships with each other, their relationships, the complexities of the social world in which we live. That's the sort of icing on the cake of this whole process. And monkeys and apes create their kind of bonded communities by grooming each other. They're in big groups, spend a lot of their day doing this kind of um, social grooming to each other. So somehow language is like grooming. Usually, apes groom one ape at a time. However, language is conveyed to multiple people at once. The reason humans were able to form larger groups than apes was because of this language. Neanderthals, who had larger brains than us, had entered the realm of language first. But what made them disappear? Was it the climate? We survive the cruel coldness in the final glacial epic with them. Then why is it us who are left standing? Pero fundamentalmente no vivían, no su longevidad no era eh, tan prolongada, tan extendida como la nuestra, sino que probablemente su sus tiempos de vida eran mucho más cortos que nosotros. Uno, uno de los aspectos que estamos ahora estudiando es precisamente el ciclo biológico de los neandertales. A tooth is a record keeper of an individual's entire life. It can be used to reconstruct the biological clock of primitives. Teeth grow like trees. Layers are accumulated. The part formed first rises to the top. The lower part of the tooth tells the death time of an individual. Lines are formed when an individual suffers from poor nutrition or disease. These lines can be used to speculate periods of great stress. Pues hemos visto los neandertales que en el momento del destete se produce una crisis en su crecimiento. Y esa crisis se manifiesta en lo que llamamos técnicamente hipoplasia dental. Es decir, en los dientes aparecen unas líneas. While we get permanent molars at the age of 10, they get molars at the age of 6. Their childhood was four years shorter than ours. Neanderthals had no time to enjoy their childhood. They had to grow up fast to replace the adults who died early. At the end of the glacial epoch, their population had dwindled to 5,000. Why would we slow down our childhoods? You know, modern humans have one of the longest childhoods on the planet, and many people have offered ideas about what's the advantage of having a long and slow childhood. One idea is that modern humans allow a longer period for our brains to develop and our social behaviors to be mastered. During childhood, we learn the complex rules of society. The brain develops in quality during this time. What Homo sapiens had and the Neanderthals did not have was a long childhood. <laughs>